You know, when the Minnesota North Stars entered the 78-79 season, hot off to merge with the Cleveland Barons, we thought this was going to be the last chance for the squad to do something uh, in the NHL before the squad was even going to move, be moved or folded. And boys, the 79-80 season, they, uh, they exceeded expectations. Came within three games of the Stanley Cup Finals. He lost a tough series to the Flyers in the semifinals after knocking out the, off the two Canadian marquee teams in Toronto and Montreal in back-to-back series. So in this podcast, we're going to talk a little bit about that season. And what entailed probably one of the most unexpected runs in hockey history. Now, this team had a ton of talent. Now, Al McAdam was there, Stevie Payne, Bobby Smith, Tim Young, Glenn Sharpley, uh, Mike Eves, Craig Hartsburg, Ron Zanussi, Brad Maxwell, a young Brad Maxwell, actually, uh, Gary Sargent as well, Mike Polich, and, of course, the, uh, the Steve Kristoff, from the uh, straight off the Olympic team. Now, Christoph had 16 goals for Minnesota and 34 combined late season games and playoff contests. I think that's what put them over the, over the mark. Now, the reason I think Minnesota was very, very successful this year, you had a strong combination of Canadian players and up and coming <coughs> American skaters and the young uh, Bobby Smith and Stevie Payne, you know, uh, that combination, uh, 69 goals in a regular season. Even though Bobby only scored one goal in the playoffs, his playmaking uh, with Payne and McAdam and all the key players really played a part. Now, McAdam, one of the, the few players at the time in PI history to, to break down points in a regular season. He had 42 goals, and uh, Payne had 42 as well with 85 points, including 43 assists. Now, uh, even though the, most of the players had a great plus-minus during the season, they would have defensive lapses that would uh, cause them to give up a lot of goals, and that was the factor that played against them against the Flyers, but we'll get into that in a second. Now, the regular season was, uh, again, uh, quite interesting. They finished with a winning record for the first time in seven years and finished in third place in the Abbas division with 88 points. Now, former Cleveland Bear and Al McAdam led the team in scoring with 93 points and captured the Bill Masters and Trophy, named after the former star for perseverance in hockey. Now, the sweep of Toronto came in three straight games, while in the quarterfinals, the Swept Montreal in the first two games, uh, gave up two ga- two wins at home, lost game five in Montreal, rebounded against Michel Leroux in uh, game six, and then, of course, uh, the McAdam late goal that uh, uh, secured uh, Montreal's fate. Well, again, we'll talk about that in a second. Now, uh, general manager, of course, was former uh, star Lou Lanny with Glenn Somnor over from the WHA with uh, former WHA stalwart Paul Schmier as captain. Now, ironically, they had no assistant captains on the squad. I think Bobby Smith and McAdam should have been assistant. Now, they're only getting 13,000 fans a game, but, again, uh, very, very dedicated. Now, Jean Meloche played the big factor. He had 27 wins, finally reaching that promise he had previously, even though with the rotten teams, with a 3.06 average. Now, some people call it the Cinderella run, but this is how it worked out, ladies and gentlemen. Craig Hartsburg was a big add-on for the squad. He came over for the Birmingham Bolts. Neil Brockman was also drafted as well, and Kevin Maxwell. Like I said, it was a good draft for them in the 1979 uh, preseason. Now, ironically with this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Buffalo was the was the finest team in the Adam Division with a 47, 17, and 16 record. Boston 46, 21, and 13, while Toronto was 35, 45. So a very strong uh, uh, squads. Quebec had an off season, but this this again was a rough division at the time. Now it started off very successful for Minnesota. You won the first three games of the season. Now you never ever really had any big slumps uh, during the year, except for uh, in January we lost uh, six out of eight games. But of course, a lot of the uh, the East Coast uh, and Midwest uh, teams had trouble with January and February. Uh, so. The key point to me, where be, I think he really became a contender when he won uh, seven straight games <coughs> in March. And the biggest win, of course, was a 7-4 knockover of Boston and a 72-72 win over Toronto to secure their playoff spot. Now, again, we're going to look a little bit at the stats here. and It's, it's kind of interesting to look at. They had more than a dozen players with 10 goals or more. They had uh, a strong plus-minus. Uh, McAdam plus 36, Steve plus 37. 
Now, uh, why do you add a high plus minus? They had a really, really good uh, plus minus differential in the regular season. They only gave up 253 goals, so they scored uh, 58 more than they gave up, and that really uh, played a huge factor against uh, Toronto. Toronto, the opening series, and this is pretty well the end of the uh, the glory years of the 1970s for Toronto. Uh, uh, the Stars won 6-3 in the opener, 7-2 in Game 2, then uh, uh, in Toronto won 4-3 in the third game. Now, this was kind of bizarre, ladies and gentlemen. April 8th. When he started that series, a lot of people thought Toronto was going to beat Minnesota. It didn't work out. By April 17th, in the second game of the, the games at the Forum, they won an opener 3 nothing and won game 2-4-1. The Stars had won five straight by, by uh, scores uh, that basically they only gave up nine goals in those first five straight games. But they kind of you know, hit a little, uh, little bump in the road in back-to-back -back games in uh, Minnesota, losing 5 nothing and 5-1. They went back to Montreal, lost 6-2, uh, but starting Buddy the Rock in Game 6 worked against Montreal, and Denny Haro, unfortunately, in the losing uh, in Game 7, gave up uh, almost an empty net goal to Tom Younghands. He, uh, he didn't play the puck correctly, and Younghands only scored 10 goals a regular season. That's the score that broke their back, and of course McAdam with the late goal after Montreal had tied it. Now against the Flyers, again they're outclassed, and no surprise there because it was a conflict of, of systems. They lost 6-5 in the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, they won 6-5 in the opener, but then the Flyers took over, winning 7-0, uh, 5-3, 3-2, and 7-3. Now, uh, their momentum, like I said, only lasted as long as he didn't play a team like a Flyers. They would have a trouble with aggressive side because he weren't uh, like, a, like a goon side. Now... What really stood out for me, Gary Edwards was a good backup, even though, uh, uh, you know, uh, Milash played more in the players. But uh, the strong defense, again, Kurt Giles, Fred Barrett, Craig Hartsburg, Brad Maxwell, Paul Schmier, Gary Sargent, and, uh, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, Dave Hanson was getting old, good on defense. But what was kind of weird here, ladies and gentlemen, on, on the wings, uh, Perrault of Brasser and Ken Eric Anderson was there. One of the first times that Minnesota had two Swedes in the lineup. Al McAdam, Steve Payne, Tom Youngins, Ron Zanussi, very underrated. But the centers really played out. Glenn Sharpley, Bobby Smith, Mike Polish, Tim Young, Mike Eves, a young Rob Flockard, Rob Flockard, Chris Maneri, and again, Kristoff coming over from the Olympic team. And Janisak, too, uh, showed up as the backup there. So, uh, you know, now I basically believe I saw all seven games in the Minnesota series. Sure, Guido Fleur was injured, and sure, there was other factors as well. Ken Dryden wasn't there. Jacques Lemire wasn't there. But Minnesota uh, played the Montreal game better than Montreal in that series. Montreal, again, had a lot of injuries, but you got to play with the play uh, against the team with the format that works. And unfortunately, they just weren't ready for Minnesota's youth. Now, I say Minnesota's youth, okay? Let's look at it, put this in perspective. Uh, under the age of 25, 25 or less, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 24 of the Stars players on the squad were under 20, 24. Excuse me, 25 and under. And like I said, a good mixture from all over the world. Uh, again, Minnesota, Manitoba, B.C., uh, all parts of Quebec, Alberta, you know. And uh, I look at the, the calming influence of Paul Schmier. You know, he had the fought through the WHA wars. He was 33 at the time. He was like the old man of the squad. And uh, like I said, there were some WHA, uh, you know, holdovers as well. But I really believe Craig Hartsburg getting 44 points in a regular season, another four in the playoffs, was a big factor. He played a lot of minutes, and a young Brad Maxwell, too. I've always was impressed with Brad Maxwell. Tom McCarthy was quite young, too. He was only 19. He had 36 points that season. And uh, Minnesota had always had a big fan base in Canada ever since the 71 series against Montreal uh, because of Danny Grant. And, of course, the maritime factor is Bobby Smith was from North Sydney. Uh, Al McAdam was uh, from Charlottetown. 
and uh, that played a big factor. They were considered almost like a maritime squad, and uh, it's kind of weird how it went out. Uh, the fan base for the Montreal Canadiens was conflicted because most maritimers, again, are Montreal or Toronto fans, but to see Bobby Smith do so well, nice kid from North Sydney, and Al McAdam as well. Al McAdam, one of the hardest working players that the NHL has ever seen gone above his, his skill and beyond. It was, again, more than ironic and more than fitting that he scored against Montreal in that famous Game 7. And you can watch YouTube highlights of that game. And uh, Montreal choosing to bring in Denny Haro, I think, cost him the series. Uh, they should have traded for a number one. They didn't. But like I said, uh, the uh, uh, when you have uh, 14 forwards and only you're only playing 10 against a team like Minnesota. Minnesota's going to catch up again. So uh, Minnesota was more deserving. But the Flyers, again, uh, I think the Flyers were a little bit weakened by the Stars because we have to remember they went undefeated for a lot of lot of games. And I think that 6-5 loss was a sign of the weakness, of course, with the Islanders knocking them off on Nystrom's goal in that six-game series. It showed that, you know, everybody is fallible. But it would have been quite interesting if things were a little bit different. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how... Uh, if Minnesota playing the Islanders would have led to them beating New York, I don't think so. I think the Islanders were the team of destiny that year. But uh, Montreal advancing, uh, I I would have salivated to see a Montreal Islanders a Stanley Cup final. Islanders were pretty uh, pretty well would have won. There was no uh, reasoning that Lafleur was going to be back after that massive injury with that hit by Boutet there the the Hartford series. So ladies and gentlemen, the Stanley Cup final appearance, which happened quite uh, quite soon after, is all based on this. And again, that seven-game series, Minnesota in Montreal, still remains a classic where the, the, the young and cup and coming squad knocks off a veteran squad. And it's kind of uh, fitting that the Stars ended Montreal's reign because they played the Montreal game better than Montreal in that series. So that's the story of the 1979-80 Minnesota Nard Stars. If you like what we're doing with our Stars Ventures podcast, let us know what to like, comment, and subscribe. And give us a comment who's your favorite star player from that year or your favorite moment from that season. Where Minnesota truly became uh, brought in enough Americans to legitimize what needed to be done. You had to have a mixture of Canadian and American players to make it work. When they got Kristoff, it all came into focus. Thanks for listening. Bye.